At commencements around the country, universities select speakers who are outstanding leaders and invite them to commencement as role models for our graduates. Today's speaker is someone I admire, not only for applying his creative and technical aptitudes to building tools that improve human lives, but also for choosing to base his entrepreneurial activities in South Florida. His faith in the capacity of our region to be an innovation hub aligns with the university's hemispheric aspirations. And together, we can truly leverage the potential of our geographic endowment. To introduce today's speaker, I would like to ask the presiding trustee, Wayne Chaplin, to come forward. President Frank, it gives me great pleasure to introduce Roni Abalovitz. Roni is one of the rare individuals wired for equal reliance on the right and left hemisphere of his brain. He credits his parents, a father who was an Air Force flight engineer, entrepreneur, and inventor, and a mother who was an accomplished painter and educator for nurturing his interests in both technology and the creative arts. Today, he is the founder, president, and chief executive officer of Magic Leap, a firm that, prom that prompted by his father insistence that astronauts, excuse me, pardon me, a firm that promises to turn computing on its head by bringing it to yours. Born in 1971 in Cleveland, Ohio, Roney and his family moved in the 1980s to South Florida, a whole new adventure filled with creatures of both land and sea, skateboarding, flying small planes with his uncle, and the dream of one day becoming a Miami Hurricane quarterback. Like everybody else in the room. Aspiring to design solar-powered race cars, became an astronaut, an animator, and to star in a band. He enrolled in the UM College of Engineering, and while a tackling dummy was his only position on the Canes football offered him, he became a javelin thrower on the varsity track and field team. Along with a cartoonist for the Miami Hurricane student paper and a DJ at WVUM. Prompted by his father's insistence that astronauts need life support systems, he turned his focus from aerospace to biomedical engineering and began thinking about technology interface with the human body and the capacity for engineering to respect and help people. His experiences in graduate school led to the launch of his first two biomedical companies, ZCAT and Mako Surgical, the latter of which produced the first FDA cleared heptic or touch robotic system used in surgery. After selling Mako in 2013, Roni launched Magic Leap to seamlessly blend the computing world with the physical one. Twice named a technology pioneer by the World Economic Forum, Roni describes the shared vision as Magic Leap as one, of, one that complements a connective, creative, and collective world of human experience. Please welcome your commencement speaker, a double UM alumnus and distinguished entrepreneur, Roni Abovitz. Thank you so much. First, I want to thank President Frank for inviting me here to speak today. It's uh, sort of an overwhelming um, experience and moment and for sharing some of his incredible vision of the future with me, which was just a few weeks ago, it was incredible. And, and also Dean Bardet for being a true supporter and friend 
and to the university for creating such a wonderful place. My time here at the University of Miami was rich and full of every good experience imaginable. I also learned a bunch of stuff. How to be an engineer and how to be a decent person. I also want to thank my mother and father for essentially bringing me into the world. That's a pretty fundamental thing. And for supporting every idea and creative journey. And to my family and friends and relatives for accepting me and all my wild and out there ideas and notions. Uh, to my daughter uh, for helping to teach me how to be a good dad, still learning. Uh, and to my wife for pretty much everything. So I was wondering, what the heck was I going to talk about today? Um, and I was inspired by a friend of mine named Graham Devine, who began writing letters to the future at our company some time ago. And Graham is probably one of the three people in the world who's a reference for a character named Halliday in a book called Ready Player One, which is going to be a movie coming out in 18, but it's a great book. You should read it. Um, so go geek, go geek out. So here's my letter, and I hope you enjoy it. So it's, it's Dear Future, hey, how are you doing? I know that space-time always exists, so I know that you can hear me. What's up? Sorry, sorry about that whole climate change thing. Thank God we switched to solar and wind power by 2035. What a mess we'd be without that. Holy cow. How did we do this? We ended war. War just completely sucks. Why did it take so long to figure it out as a species? Well, we did, and we poured trillions of dollars into sustainable energy research. We also made a clean and safe fusion engine. We kind of made a baby star, and it really runs incredibly well. And it was designed right here at the University of Miami. The whole Earth now has all of the energy and food it will ever need. It was always right here, right in front of us. That fusion thing, it really does work. Now we have rapid printing anything out of anything. We can terraform asteroids and planets. It completely rocks. Mars, I'm sorry, Mars sucks. I'm, I said it. It's just a big sandy parking lot. No Wi-Fi, no internet. How many times can you watch Game of Thrones? I would have never made it without my Beatles records, and we still have vinyl. Some things are forever. John Coltrane, Jimi Hendrix, they got me through some long, cold nights on Mars. We did learn a lot about life on other planets, though, when we built a kind of trailer park in space. We also built our first interplanetary spaceport. Now, that was really cool. That became a springboard for new adventures. Now, Jupiter and Saturn, they are awesome. Surfing those rings on an astro board, nothing beats that experience in space. Maybe snowboarding on Pluto. Actually, the best is what we call black hole spelunking. Stephen Hawking invented it. It's a really intense thing, not for the timid, but it's really, really cool. There's still an infinite mystery out there. We really never solved everything. We actually just learned how to be human beings. Our egos contracted. They became smaller. We became more creative. We loved more. We had more joy. We stopped trying to conquer and rule and dominate. We learned how to love and respect and create and just be part of something much bigger, something infinite that we just need to accept and be with. That karma thing, it turns out it's real. Just like passing physics, calculus, advanced chemistry, digital control theory, you could see what I had to do when I was here. You just keep at it over and over and over again until you finally learn what you need to know, until you pass and you could level up. Do good things, they come back, and they always help you. You'll need a thesis. Your thesis is your life. You run it. All of the decisions are yours. Make it really good. Now to AI and robots. That got messy really quickly, but we figured it out. So we had Asimov's three laws, but we added a fourth. This comes from Isaac Asimov's Handbook of Robotics. 2058 AD, a robot may not injure a human being or through inaction allow a human to come to harm. We actually applied this at Mako Surgical. A robot must obey the orders given by a human being except when those orders would conflict with the first law. We actually programmed that into our robot at Mako as well. 
A robot must protect its own existence as long as such protection does not conflict with the first or second laws. We didn't really do that at Mako. And the fourth law, which is a new one, we shall use the power of AI, artificial intelligence, to amplify and help people and to not replace them. We also learned that driving exponential technologies, discovering science, all kinds of new and amazing things, without binding that outcome of that research and capability to ethics and what is good for humanity can be a terribly bad thing. Thank you, future, for allowing us not to screw up so badly that we have no future. It is great that we learned that lesson. Social equality. Finally, hard to believe that society treated women and minorities so bad for so long. We all just woke up one day and realized our infinite creative potential, our common humanity, and we finally all got the empathy gene. We just need to be people and recognize our common humanity and to accept and include each other. Life is so much better now. Social justice. We realize that we cannot ignore the poor and unfortunate. Our best and brightest came together and we solved economic disparity. We placed empathy over greed. We realize that with tech and creativity, we have endless abundance. And that there's enough for everyone to live a good life on this planet. Again, it took a long time to get there, but everyone is so much happier now. Society is in balance. We celebrate the individual. We have freedom. We care about each other. Simple stuff every family understands. We just forgot that we are all one big family. Thank you, Future, for reminding us. Now to Star Wars, episode 932. Luke's 97th reincarnation. R2-D2 is now a coffee barista. The 800th reboot, 800th reboot of Spider-Man. Okay, it was cool to fight the giant green orb monster than a collective cinematic week in Miami with Spider-Man. But my haptic suit, it really needs some tuning. I really have nothing to complain about. Our quality of life and our creative life is amazing. We can all create, we can all co-create. We live in a wonderful world that is endlessly fun and cool. We do not live in a VR simulation. But we figured that our brain is co-creating the world that we experience. We live in this world and we make this world better by filling it with our creative imagination. And then we share that with each other. We also learned humility. That took forever, but we did. There was no equation for everything. We discovered the, the endless and infinite complexity of the universe, and it finally humbled us all. And we just became thankful for being part of it. And thank you to the Canes for winning 100 straight college bowls. Can we please make it 101? And can the Cleveland Browns please win one Super Bowl? I have been waiting a long, long time. I know that quantum theory tells us there are infinite amount of parallel universe, universes, many worse than this. We use quantum computing and with quantum entangled travel, we visit a few thousand parallel worlds. Some were really bad, but we came together as a people and we realized what would happen if we would not work together with love and respect for each other. How else could we repel asteroid 29B and defeat that alien invasion of laser rabbits? My AI clones, they're pretty awesome. They're all a lot smarter than me, they play guitar better than me, and they go to work for me. I get to spend a lot more time with my family now. My end of the year review with them, they rank me in the middle of the pack with myself. I need to work harder next year. They're understanding. I'm not silicon, and they are. They get that us meat puppets, we need a helping hand now and then. Oh yeah, and that time travel thing, it can get really, really weird. Probably best to just let it be. And if you go, get a time guide. They're expensive, but definitely worth it. AIs do not govern us, but they are great objective partners in maintaining our governing principles. Our courts are fair now, and we have no more corruption in politics and government. We merge computation and the law, and we created systems of fairness that work really, really well. All of you law school grads, get to learning some coding just about now. We also modified the Declaration of Independence a bit. A few things were left out. 
we hold these truths to be self-evident, that all genders, including but not limited to, women and men are created equal. Also, all races and nationalities, and that we will respect that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights. Among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. We also respect our living planet and all life upon it. And our role as conscientious stewards to care for it and make it better, and to keep it in the best possible condition for all future generations. We care about our children and future generations more than ourselves, and we shall make this a good home for them. I know, future, it took us a long, long time to get here, but thank you for being patient with us and for believing with us. Oh, yes, and this, <laughs> and this University of Miami graduating class. They all made it happen. No pressure. Just go out and save the world. It's why you were born. Thank you. Good luck to all of you, and go do it. Now, today, don't waste any time, even though space-time may just be a neurologic construct. Make it happen, and make it happen together. All of you have infinite creative potential, and it has always been there. You do not need all the answers. You just need to have a vision, and you need to get on the road to it. You will find everything you need along the way, and you'll make some good friends. Enjoy this life. It could be a really good one, and never, ever, 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 ever give up. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ronnie, for really inspiring us to dream big and, and have the courage to, to push the limits of what's possible.